<laughs> okay, so these slides are very rough, very skeleton, so you're going to learn through doing in this one. You're not really going to read and learn anything. So, but body language, why do I care about body language? Why is it important? We are born with a sense of learning body language. So ask yourself the question, how do babies communicate to adults? How do they get their message to the outside world? They can cry. But that's not always everything. They can cry about anything. They can cry if they're happy. They can cry if they're hungry. They can cry if they need to go to the bathroom. That's what babies do. So how do you really know what a baby wants? Think about it. You're interactive with the baby. You can tell when they're happy. You can tell when they're sad. Not all the time, but most of the time you can tell. How do they learn how to express themselves without words? We are born with the sense of body language. It is important. It inherits in every single culture, every single person. It is the one universal language across that spans all people all ages, and that's why you need to understand it. Now, a lot of things I'm going to tell you today may seem like common sense. You may read, I may say, you may, well, yeah, that makes sense, but the problem is we don't always think about it. We don't consciously pick up on body language. And that's what I ask you all to do today. I'm going to give you some tips, I'm going to give you some ideas to go out in the community and try these things. And they really will be easier. They're going to be common sense to you, but once you learn to put all the clues together, you really build a context of what appropriate body language reading is. So, we just talked about this. So it's actually processed within the limbic system. Uh, we'll talk later about a little bit about Broca's area. Um, so you have uh, processing not only of language, spoken language of Broca's area, but you also process body language of Broca's area. So we can go to the next slide. Oh, sure. So, okay. so I know the biggest problem people have is difficulty public speaking. I know it's the, that stands everybody, not just medical students, not just leaders. It's intimidating to get up in front of a group of people and talk, if you don't do normally or if you don't practice. So these are some quick tips you can do. We talked about the power pose yesterday, and you're all going to get up right now. There we go. And we're going to do 15 seconds of power pose. So your power pose can be up, it can be like this, you can, you can even sit down and just spread out. Just, you, the idea is to make yourself big. You want to be a giant. Take up as much space as you can. That is the idea of the power pose. It doesn't have to be specific. <laughs> okay, perfect. Everybody's. So you do this by yourself or in front of people, it doesn't matter, for about two minutes prior to speaking. And what power posing actually does is a study from Harvard. It causes a surge of testosterone and it decreases cortisol levels. We all know the implications of that. Your competitive, your competitive goes up, your, um, your ability to speak confidently goes up, your stress level goes down. That sounds like a perfect formula for speaking in front of a group of people when you're nervous, right? So it really is effective. There's science backing it up. It's not just something silly you do. So if you're interested, just look up the Harvard study on body language and power posing, and you can find all the details. So this kind of goes into the next point, focusing not on being in a restricted position. So next time you're on rotations, next time you're in the hospital, the best way to pick up on this is look at family members and patients. You'll see them in this position restricted. They'll be crunched up, they'll be tense, they'll be tight, their hands will be near their neck. That's all signals of nervousness, anxiety, and just general uncomfortableness. So the biggest, the easiest way to see this is with those types of people. So next time you're on the wards in like ER or something, just take a look at the family member and just take a quick glance at their body language and you'll see this. I guarantee it. So, just really quick about the neck. Does anybody know why you touch your neck or your nerves? Yes, so your neck is the most vulnerable area in your body, essentially, right? So, you think about it, I'm sure some of you are nervous sometimes when you speak, and you're nervous in front of groups when you touch your neck without even thinking about it. Just pay attention when you touch your neck. What you're telling your brain is that I am scared. I need to protect myself. So, the brain knows that. The brain knows that you're scared, and it goes into defensive mode. It locks you down. When you start doing this, you start tensing up, your throat tenses up, the muscles that control your voice tense up, your pitch goes higher. We'll talk about pitch and voice a little bit later, but just keep your hand off your neck. Just doing that will tell your brain that I'm okay, I'm not in a compromising situation. So commanding a strong presence kind of goes into when you're speaking, you don't want to be, you don't want to be standing off to the side, doing nothing, just like this, and talking like this. You want to move, you want to keep your body open. I'm not saying stand like this and talk to people, <laughs> but you need, to, you need to just make yourself a little bit larger than you would. I'm not standing here talking to you like this, because you'll get the sense that I'm nervous. So you need to stay open, you need to use your hands, and we'll talk about hand motions a little bit later, but 
just make sure that you are you look comfortable. Uh, we'll get to that. That's the easiest way actually to determine if somebody has good or bad body language. <coughs> so a very quick and dirty tip. So just as you're as you're talking, as you're speaking, as you're getting ready to talk, just focus on looking comfortable. So just keep your shoulders down, hands off your neck, open up your chest a little bit, and just keep your hands wide. And another another thing about the hands that is great is make sure your palms face your audience. This is that. This signals that you are not open and that you're not receptive and that you're kind of like, you're kind of within yourself. So when you're talking, you'll notice my hands are facing you. I motion towards you, I don't motion away from you. All right, so the next point, there's a really interesting quote and in one of the resources, uh, one of the references you'll see later. So we're a generation of phones. We all grew up on cell phones, we grew up on computers, we grew up on the internet, most of us. So what is that, what implications does that have for our communication? So we think about generations past us where they didn't have this communication. They didn't have email, they didn't have texting, they didn't have, they didn't have these types of electronic, textual-based communications. They spoke in person. So the interesting thing about, about this is that when you grow up like this and you're trained to communicate like this, it comes across in your spoken language. So the biggest thing you can do is just be cognizant of how I'm speaking. So if, if I'm used to just rattling away a quick text or rattling away an email sentence, I can do that in a few seconds. But when you're speaking, you don't want to do that in two seconds. You want to take your time and slow down. And the whole point of this is you do not want to communicate when you're speaking as you would communicate in a text message or an email. Eye contact. OK. So this one's a little awkward. And I hope to make you all uncomfortable. This is what I'm trying to do. Uh, find somebody next to you. You're going to take 15 seconds. You're going to stare them right in the eye. Look at me, Matt. <laughs> So that's the point I'm trying to get across. If you do that to a stranger, you will be uncomfortable. So first three people, really quick, give me one detail you notice. Somebody raise their hand to know what you noticed about the first you look at. Perfect. As soon as we looked at each other, we both smiled. Yeah. We'll talk about smiles. Okay. Anybody else? One more person. Eyes were very expressive. Eyes were expressive. Okay. Notice nobody told me eye color. You're, obs you're not observing eye color. So your next takeaway tip is that if you have trouble looking somebody in the face, it also signals that weakness, that anxiety, that nervousness. So next, the easiest thing you can do is there's a little quick experiment you can do. Next time you're at the grocery store, next time you're interacting with somebody new, look at them in the eye long enough to learn their eye color and start a small conversation with them and see how that goes. Then go back, somebody completely new, don't look at them in the eye and then try and talk to them and see how that conversation goes. I guarantee you, you'll have better flow with the person that you're looking in the eye. You get an instant bond with these people. When you look at them in the eye, you look at their face, you scan their face, it makes them open up to you. It makes them feel like you're comfortable and it makes them comfortable that you're comfortable. So give it a try. You, you will see it's true. It takes a few seconds, talk about the weather, talk about sports, whatever you want to talk about. Then let me know what you find. Gestures. So the biggest thing with gestures is that they can either distract or they can greatly enhance what you do. Two minutes? Okay, great. Two seconds. So, two minutes. So, uh, you don't want to distract. So, um, if I'm talking to you like this, you're just going to look at my hands, you're not going to listen to what I'm saying. Use your hands to gesture. Me. Uh, okay, mirroring is huge, so we're going to talk about it in two seconds. Uh, mirroring, mirroring is, um, it, it also helps to build that bond and increase connectedness between people. So, the whole idea behind mirroring is pick up on people's body language and mirror it back to them. If they have this, this tilt head, tilt it the opposite way. If they smile at you, smile back. So you just want to take their body language and mirror it back. And there's a lot of evidence showing that it, it feels an almost instant connectedness between people. Oh, what's really important on this? The feet. Okay, feet. Um, people can learn to lie with their body language. They can lie with their words very easily. It's harder to lie with their body language. But when the feet are the last level to lie with, it's very hard. So if you look, I'm sure if I look at something right now, that are bored or uncomfortable. Your feet will be wrapped around the chairs. Uh, you look at people in compromising situations, you look at um, interrogations with direct, with, uh, F, with whoever, FBI, police, 
you'll see most of the suspects' feet are wrapped around chairs. So pay attention to the feet. And a quick way, you can do this in social context, social experiment, is look at people in a group. If you want to approach a group of two or three people, and you want to join the conversation. If their feet don't face you when you join, you're not really welcome. They're not going to tell you that directly. They'll be warm, they'll turn to you, they'll be friendly. But if their feet don't turn to face you, you're really not, it's a power conversation, and you're, really, you're not really expected to join. So keep that in mind. Look at the feet next time. Um, That's it. Um, there's a lot more we talked about. If you have any questions about, about body language at all, I, I, there's so much to talk about. We talked about this If you're interested, any of these books are wonderful. They'll give you everything you need to know. Great, thanks guys.